What is up guys, True here bringing you another review on Cupid's Chocolates. There's so much to talk about. Once again, Julie, I gotta keep saying it man, best girl. I, I really do think that she's the best girl. And the reason why I'm showing Lynn is because, well, before I even get to talking about Julie and some important stuff about her, we get the start of the episode where Lynn is at the hospital. I'm glad to see we're getting a follow-up for her. And Yahoo he goes visits her with, you know, edible arrangements, basically. And we have him just kind of explain the situation you know hey you know i'm here to visit you and she's happy of course because thinking you know hey uh, uh uh you're visiting me i'm happy to see you but he says that julie also sent him there so it kind of depresses her a little bit though i don't think he said, needs to say that and when he asks her what's going you know what happened between you and julie she prefers not to talk about it and she just kind of get sad but i do think that lynn and julie are good friends i think that that was really cool of them having you know that little interaction and she does care for him, her i mean i know that lynn is the most mature out of the group and she cares for everyone but it was really cool to see you know lynn just kind of really you know caring for julie more than probably more than anyone else in the group uh we also had the return of the douchebag which I wasn't expecting at all. Uh, du, uh, Duzwe, uh, I'm just gonna say him Du. I, think, I know that's his first name for sure. I hate this guy, honestly. This dude, dude, Du, whatever, literally is just kind of trying to get Julie back. But at first, I'm thinking something has to have happened. If he married this, the girl he was supposed to be with, why is he after her? And we come to find out that his intentions. Or that he wants Julie to just kind of bor borrow money for him to kind of help his company out. Which I forgot what it was that his company was running. But either way, this dude is crooked. Uh, I, I felt so bad for Julie when she first encountered him. She was not expecting him. Uh, and we had her just... We we had her in a, in a state that we have never seen her before. She was... Well, not before, but that kind of state that she was in before uh breaking up with him she was happy and now she's all back to the way she was depressed and just scared scared for her life which surprised me because we know that julie can actually handle herself now she is not a weak character she's never been a weak character as far as we've seen her but now we see some vulnerability in her and I think that makes it a little bit more real. It's kind of like when you see a ghost. Well, not a ghost, but someone or something that just automatically haunts you. And that's what's happened to her in this episode. I think that seeing him and being kidnapped was just horrible for her. I did not expect that to happen. We also have in the next episode, we had Mei Tata showing up again. Uh, trying to help Yahawi. And of course, she can't use her abilities yet, and she's scared for her for Yahoo's life. Uh, thankfully for her, she did spot out what happened with uh, Julie and was able to notify him in time. And when they arrive at the location of where they're holding Julie, she you know she wants to like don't I, I can't have you you know getting hurt it would be my fault and we know that may tata loves yahoi and maybe yahoi doesn't even realize it yet himself but you know he really does care for may tata he's like look if anyone's gonna get hurt there let it be me i need you to do something for me i need you to record the incident i need you to use your invisibility in that way that therefore and you know I, I i need witness and so Having Meitata record everything was really hard for her, but she agrees on it. And when we have Yahoo show up, he shows up like a badass and he lets himself get beat up, which really sucked. In front of Julie, she's upset. You know, she cannot stand the fact of having the man she loves getting beat up. And they make he makes mention of like, you know, whatever you want with Julie, don't don't mess with her. Please do not and do actually just like like you're the replacement i'm the one that she that she uh she was in love with first and then we get the flashback that i thought was really interesting that throughout the whole time julie actually has loved yahoo 
I mean, we saw from childhood how she was always being close to him. And because her mom said, look, in order for Yahoi to recognize you, you need to be better than him. And I thought that's messed up. Honestly, you can't have like, I mean, I understand competition, uh, especially a friendly competition, but that was just overboard. Her mom kept praising her and she liked that. However, Yahawi felt very distant and we saw that and it got worse as time went on. He only wanted to be close to her, but to him, she he thought that she only cared about competition, that grades were the only thing that mattered and friendship was just kind of tossed to the side, which really sucked. I mean, I really did um, felt bad for him and her as well because she still loved him. She wanted those times with him again. She wanted to be able to enjoy him, but of course her attitude was changing her she was more competitive and when the time was happened when they were reunited again they it was kind of like i can't compete with you at all you know because i'm in a class i'm on a level below you you know and she uh, felt upset about that she started reminiscing more about it and we had the incident where she was going to give him chocolates uh handmade but she was outside of a store so maybe they were handmade and she just didn't get those but we had the whole scene where she you know is trying to find him and when she finds him she's all flustered and she's and everyone's like oh you're looking for him you're looking for him I was like no it can't be you know why would she look for someone like um yahoo and she drops her chocolate after being flustered and we have uh, yeah how we try to pick him up and she's like no don't touch those and he's like see she if she if they were for me then she wouldn't be behaving that way which you know makes sense you know it's a, that kind of logic just doesn't you know doesn't really go over my head you know if you if a girl doesn't want you to touch her stuff she doesn't want you to touch her stuff it's kind of how it is and so and we have her just kind of being very soon to rape, might i add but she was very upset she couldn't be honest with herself and it's like i'll just give it to the dude because he's all popular and all that he'd be the perfect person for me and everyone's like yeah 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 you know, that would make more sense and so we have her going up to do and just like please be accept my chocolates and yada 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 and so that's when they all start going and going to happen you know when they start going out and it, it was just he, she goes and receives a blow to the head because she was she was defended Yahawi, which surprised me. Like I did not expect her to do that. It's like, and then she goes back to her normal self. It's like, she laughs at him and says, "No." It's like Yahawi wasn't the replacement; you were. And it was kind of like, damn, a woman in love is a dangerous thing. Hey, that's that's real talk right there. But guys, this episode, these two episodes were intense. I hope we get more of this intensity. Let me know what you guys thought in the comment section below. But as always, stay safe and I will catch you 